Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help others find high-value, hi-fi, home theater, headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about my favorite 10 speakers, or my 10 favorite speakers, because that would be five pair. Anyway, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about my 10 favorite speakers, regardless of price. Now, you could call this the my favorite speakers of 2021. A lot of these have been around for a while, so it's not like these were just produced in 2021. So they go, they go back a few years. For the most part, most people can still get their hands on these if they want to. Number, and we're not doing a sponsor or any of that silliness today. Number one, the Wharfdale Diamond 11.2. This speaker for me was the first time I fell in love with a truly warm speaker one that was rolled off on top it was the most lush thick speaker i think i've ever heard and it was really something else that speaker really helped me to appreciate warmer speakers and snap me out of being more of a u-shaped guy or a v-shaped speaker all the time v-shaped although i did like some neutral speakers as well but the Wharfdale Diamond, I thought it was built beautifully. I thought it sounded, I, th I needed to get used to the sound. I needed to get to know that speaker. But once I did, I really fell in love with it. Number two, the Emotiva B1 Plus. Again, this was my first experience with a ribbon or AMT tweeter, and it blew my mind. Not only did the speaker sound good anyway, it had a very nice frequency response to my ear. There was a level of clarity a level of detail that I had never heard before in a speaker, ever. I heard air, I heard subtle, tiny nuances of acoustic guitars, fingers across strings, people coughing during live performances. I heard everything. I heard everything. And it was because of that speaker. That speaker is only $250. And I know this isn't about value per se, but still to this day, that is one of my favorite speakers. I think the B1 Plus can be an extraordinary desktop speaker it can really be a two channel speaker as well they're very small but they're very incredible you can look at the rest of the line too because i've also got the t1 plus in here so that's my third favorite speaker why because it takes everything that's good about the b1 plus makes it bigger and makes it able to fill up really any size room there's a step up the t2 plus but I never felt like I personally needed it. And I have a very large living room. And the T1 Pluses did just fine. But again, one gets that airy presentation, that AMT vibe, a ton of bass to the point where one doesn't really need a subwoofer. I know technically on paper one needs a subwoofer because they don't hit 20 hertz. But for the most part, I never felt like I needed a subwoofer. Those speakers are amazing. One of my favorite tower speakers, one of my other favorite tower speakers are the Klipsch RP6000F. You want to talk about bass response? Oh boy, these things are deep front to back. And the reason why they're deep is because they punch hard. This is my favorite Klipsch speaker. I actually like this speaker better than the Klipsch Heresy. And I know someone's going to say that's heresy. I liked them better. I thought they were prettier. I thought they soundstaged and imaged better. And I, they just seemed more cohesive than the Heresies did to me. And they had a heck of a lot more punch. The Klipsch, though, I know some people are going to say they're scooped out in the mid-range. I don't, I don't care. I think they sound pretty awesome. A little bit of a bump around the upper mid-range area, but with roomy cues, with things like that. If that's not your thing, you can bring it down a bit. There is enough awesomeness about that speaker that I really love it. The Yamo C93 II. Very U-shaped speaker, but this was my first speaker that I fell in love with, not because of just how it sounds, but how it looked as well. Kind of a departure from the regular box speakers. It had a curved front baffle, or has a curved front baffle, because I still have them. Tweed grill. One of the things about Yamo is they always have very distinctive styling. But the C93 II, I actually got that from one of my patrons. Love them. Huge port on the back. They punch really low. They go very deep. It's actually quite a small speaker. It says they have a six inch woofer, real phase plug, 
soft dome tweeter, but that soft dome tweeter sounds like a very well done aluminum or titanium tweeter. They sound incredible. They sound so detailed, almost as detailed as an AMT. Blown away. I think the Yamo C93 II, and for a while they were on sale. I think retail, they're around $400. I'll link them in the description. But they were just on sale for like $250, and I think they may be getting phased out. But anyway, the C93 II, fantastic speaker. Don't, don't expect it to be neutral speaker, though. The Sony SSCS5. I would be remiss if I didn't include the Sony SSCS5. But Randy, this isn't about value. This is about sound. I know. The Sonys are that good. They really are. In a desktop situation or a place where you, a room that you don't have a ton of space, but you still want to have that immersive experience with soundstage and imaging, they're very shallow front to back. So one can get them closer to a wall and still have depth of soundstage. They're fantastic. The top end of these speakers is remarkable. And the texture and tone and the mid-range and even the bass. Now, these will need a subwoofer. But the details, clarity in the mid-range and the upper bass are remarkable. Outstanding. At any price. It's still to this day stands up as one of the, one of the best speakers I've heard. At, at any price. I know. That's crazy. But, again... But again, sound quality is not always directly related to price. I mean, it's correlated oftentimes, but it's not, cause, it's not causal. Just because you spend a lot of money on a speaker doesn't mean it's going to sound way better than other speakers. So it can be related, but a more expensive speaker isn't always better than a less expensive speaker. All right, SVS, Ultra Bookshelf, in the Prime. But the Ultras were the ones that really blew me away because I did a comparison between the Ultras the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s, it's the big Evos, 4.2s, and the ELAC Unify Reference. And I was really surprised, but coming out of that, I actually prefer the SVS Ultras. They are a bit more of a U-shaped or a V-shaped speaker, but they had more clarity than the ELAC Unify Reference, but they weren't as particular or finicky as the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s. Now, I think... Overall, the Wharfdale is probably the better speaker, but it took a lot of moving it around to dial it in just right. The SVS Ultra bookshelves, I just put them up. They sounded awesome. Incredible soundstage. They're built incredibly well. They're just one of these speakers that I just bought, put up, and it was just perfection for me personally. I did, The clarity is otherworldly. They punch really deep. They're built. They're beautiful. Beautiful speakers. SVS Ultra Bookshelves. ELAC Unify 2.0. Not the ELAC Unify Reference, the 2.0, which often go on sale down to $450. They're originally a $600 speaker. This speaker takes a while to burn in, and I know there is arguments on both sides of the fence whether or not burn in's a thing. I don't know. All I know is they sounded like crap. or They didn't sound like crap, but they didn't sound great. And then suddenly they sounded great. And I mean really sounded great. This speaker is very neutral measuring, but it doesn't sound neutral. It sounds exciting. This speaker is a turn me, turn me, turn me up speaker. And before you know it, you're rocking like 89 dB. And people are like, turn it down. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize. You don't even realize that it's that loud. It is quite fantastic. Three-way speaker. The tweeter and the mid-range are concentrically put together. So they're concentric drivers. The bass is five and a quarter inch, maybe even a five inch woofer. It is amazing how much bass that puts out, and it will fill the largest of rooms. I had them in my living room. I even took a picture next to my fireplace because they look like toys, and they were just owning that room with sound. They are fantastic, and actually, I like those better than the Elec Unifier reference. Not just because they're cheaper, because I actually think they sound better. Polk R100, this is their new reserve line, and everything about this screams awesomeness. They are braced well, they sound fantastic, they're taking the drivers down from the Legend series. The tweeter is a ring tweeter, I think that's how you say it, and it's really an amazing tweeter. It gives you all of the benefits or all the advantages of a soft tone tweeter, but yet still kind of sounds like an AMT air motion or whatever tweeter, ribbon tweeter. Highly detailed, but yet not 
too harsh. Or, they're absolutely wonderful speakers. I'm doing a review of the R200. That's why I didn't say the R200 in this review because I have experience with the R100. They are fantastic. Abs absolutely killer. One of my favorite speakers I've ever heard. And finally, the ELAC debut reference. This was one of my end game speakers. And I purchased this speaker well before I had any aspirations of starting a YouTube channel. And still to this day, it is one of my favorite speakers. It is detailed, throws a huge sound stage, but leans a little bit warm. Some, it's an analogy sounding speaker. And I know that doesn't make sense, but it's also very transparent to the source, which means you can kind of make that speaker sound different depending upon what type of electronics you have on it. It's, I think it's a great looking speaker. It sound stages, image as well, front ported, you can get it close to a wall, but it's the sound. It's just smooth, but yet detailed at the same time. One of my favorite speakers. I love that speaker. I think it's, it used to be six or nine. I'm sure it's gone up in price again. They occasionally go on sale now. I hope you liked today's video. There'll be linked in the description. All those links will be affiliate links. So that's one way that you can support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. There's a link in the description. You can also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms. We also have a Patreon only Facebook group. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through one of the one of my favorite speakers. Or one of my my ten favorite speakers. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.